This is the story of how one player challenged 20 years of gaming history. We might finally have the chosen one. Overcoming the odds against one region's seemingly unstoppable dominance. 20 years of domination from Korea in StarCraft could end here. Claiming the title of champion and ultimately ushering in a new era for his scene. GG! It is done! This is the story of the Finnish StarCraft player, Serral, and how he became the first ever non-Korean to earn the distinction of being the best StarCraft player in the world. He is the best in the world right now, ladies and gentlemen, our Finnish player, Serral. To really appreciate just how big of an achievement Serral's run was, let's first put into perspective just how dominant Korea was at StarCraft across both Brood War and StarCraft II. The greatest example of this wasn't even anything you could see from a tournament, but rather the language the community used to describe non-Koreans. If you were in the scene and not a Korean, you were immediately considered a foreigner. Because, after all, StarCraft was Korea's game, and no one was going to beat them in it. Even when a foreigner was able to overcome Korean players at tournaments, many dismissed it as a one-off at best. Most fans simply believed that no foreigner would be able to find the same level of success if they competed in Korea against all of the top Korean players. And for the most part, this proved to be true. In fact, heading into 2018, only two foreigners across both Brood War and StarCraft II have been able to win a premier StarCraft tournament in Korea. Gur, who many consider one of the most successful foreigners of all time in the early days of Brood War, was the first. And 16 years later, Neeb would become the second player to do so in StarCraft II. Neeb's victory at Kespa Cup 2016 was extra impressive, as it allowed him to eventually become the first foreigner and eighth player ever to obtain a triple crown, which is the unofficial title for StarCraft II players who have won a premier tournament in Europe, North America, and Korea. However, even as these two players were able to make history and cement themselves as some of the greatest foreigners of all time, neither were able to carry the momentum forward and enter the conversation of being the best player in the world. Now let's turn back to Serral. The Finnish Zerg player broke out and started establishing himself as one of the top foreigners in the scene in 2017. Thanks to some big wins over Korean players like Zest at IEM Season 11 World Championship and Solar at Take's Penthouse Party 3. Along with that, he would earn his best placement at a premier event up to that point, with a second place finish at 2017 WCS Yon Shopping. Unfortunately, despite all the success and the massive steps Serral took as a player during that year, he started to face the same roadblocks that many top foreigners face. The top Korean players were proving too much to handle. Serral would find his runs at major events such as the IEM Season 11 World Championships and the WCS Global Finals at BlizzCon cut short by some of the best players in Korea. Regardless, Serral's 2017 solidified his spot as a top-tier player within the scene, but for now, the Korean pros still felt out of reach. Heading into 2018, Serral would continue to make strides, starting off the year by qualifying for the WCS Leipzig. At the event itself, Serral would go on to a great run by sweeping Masa and Nurcio, and then taking out Special and Showtime to win his first ever Premier Tournament and qualify him for the Global Finals at the end of 2018. Separating a couple of these units as well. GG, Crack and Serral is going to be the first ever WCS champion for the 2018 season. By the end of the year, Serral would have completely dominated all WCS events, coming in first in all of the main events and qualifiers, minus one second place finish. Serral was solidifying himself as the undisputed best foreigner by far. Eventually, he closes in, surrounds them, and takes them out. GG! Serral has done it yet again! He is your WCS Valencia champion! Three victories in a row for the Finnish Phenom. This is an unrivaled player in the non-Korean StarCraft II scene, one of the best pro gamers in the world. Give it up for Serral! While he punched in his ticket for the finals early, Serral remained active and made some deep runs throughout the year. Following his victory at Leipzig, Serral would go on to finish third at the IEM Season 12 World Championship, the World Electronic Sports Games, and finally as a member of Team Finland at Nation Wars 5. Throughout those three tournaments, the story remained the same. Serral was by far the best foreigner. However, the Korean pros remained a step ahead as he was consistently knocked out by a Korean player in each tournament. While Serral was able to pick up wins here and there and showed that he was close, it was clear that there was still a gap between him and the best of the best. 
Cyril's opportunity would come at GSL vs. The World, an incredibly stacked event that featured all of the top players from around the world. After having dominated the WCS circuit the entire year leading up to this event, many fans were curious as to how Cyril would perform in a setting like GSL, as this was a huge test to see where he really was skill-wise compared to the rest of the field. Three-time WCS champion, the current king of the circuit, Cyril. Two foreign players have advanced to the round of 16 for the first time in seven years in GSL history. GSL, the unshakable leader in StarCraft II. They will not easily give up the top spot that has long been theirs throughout StarCraft history. After starting things off by sweeping Kelezer, a Brazilian Terran player, in the round of 16, Cyril would face his first big challenge in the quarterfinals from Innovation, a Korean Terran player that is considered one of the four horsemen of Terran. Despite having won two straight WCS events heading into this tournament, Cyril was still considered a bit of an underdog when matched up against Innovation. However, he quickly proved people wrong, and with amazing decision-making, insane flanks, and impeccable defense, Cyril absolutely dominated innovation and earned a statement 3-0 victory. Wait to hear the transfusions and if the flood doors open, those legs are going to get on that tank and it's going to be lights out for innovation. Oh. GG! Cyril what? with a 3-0 WCS, the world fights back. Waiting for Cyril in the semifinals was The Dark, one of, if not the best, Korean Zerg players around, and a player that was also known as a foreigner killer. With a reputation like that, Dark came into this match with Cyril with full confidence that he'll be the one to end the foreigner's run, and maintain the 20-year-long status quo, especially as Dark was amazing at the Zerg mirror match. So, once again, despite his performance against Innovation, Cyril came into this match as an underdog. But that wouldn't last for long. Immediately in map 1, Cyril dominated, building up a small lead quickly into the match and never lost control, as he made quick work of Dark to take the first game. Oh my god, 26, 28, 30, drones almost dead right now, GG is called, and Cyril takes game number 1 convincingly. In Game 2, Dark quickly answered back and picked up an equally convincing win of his own. How will Cyril recover? He cannot! GG! Dark takes Game <laughs> number 2! Okay. However, that would be as far as Dark would get, as Cyril took over the rest of the match, completely dominating Dark in the next two maps and taking the series 3-1. Cyril has done it! GG! Oh my god, Cyril has now topped Innovation 3-0. He has now gone 3-1 against Dark, long considered the best Zerg in the world. Suddenly, something that once felt nearly impossible felt possible once again. Just two years after Neeb had gone on an insane run to win the Kespa Cup, was the world about to witness another foreigner beat Korea on home soil? The last survivors going into their final match. The best Zerg. Cyril! The Shield of Iron. Stats! I will be the one to survive. Waiting for him in the finals was Stats, one of the best Protoss players in the world, who had just upset Maru to reach the finals. However, it would be Cyril who was considered the favorite to win, thanks to his dominant wins over Innovation and Dark, as well as the fact that Zerg vs Protoss was by far his best matchup. With the stars seemingly aligned for his victory, Cyril entered the best of seven finals with a clear shot at putting an end to 20 years of Korean dominance. But sadly, for Cyril, things did not go as planned. Big, big up there with those links of Cyril, but the charge lots are back. They're getting up in his face again. Two more up on from the north joining in the fight. GG! Stats! Points for Cat the Oh my goodness! Oh my god! That's it! Stats! The rush works here! And Cyril just, just one or two links did not have what it takes to get rid of that pylon there in the end. Despite the matchup being in Cyril's favor, Stats would get the first blow, catching Cyril by surprise with an Archon charge lot attack, taking game one and sending a message that there is a reason he is considered one of the best Protoss players in the world. But he didn't stop there. He cannon rushed Cyril to quickly steal game two, putting the series at 2-0 in his favor. At this point, many players' mental would have shattered. Stats had effectively pulled the rug out from under Cyril, taking two games with strategies that Cyril was not prepared for. It seemed like Korea's dominance would remain upheld. 
but Cyril did not give up. The Roach is going after those Immortals. There's just too many, and GG is called. Fighting back, it looks like he might be able to reclaim this position, but there's too many Hydras. They take it out, and GG, we're even 2-2. Not letting the pressure break him, Cyril got himself on the board, halting Stat's momentum. Thanks to his great macro, Cyril had tied the series back up 2-2. It was either player's game. From there, the two players traded blows, each taking another game where Stats showed that he didn't have to rely on surprise strategies and was able to match Cyril head-on, while Cyril showed his ability to play from behind and still win through his amazing decision-making. This marathon of a series would end on the seventh and final map, when Stats' solid defense was finally cracked open by the unrelenting offense of Cyril, who threw every possible unit into a massive all-in attack to fulfill his destiny and claim victory as a foreigner. Here. He doesn't have many more force fields left. The roaches are coming up. Oh He's my god, that's so many roaches coming up. The force fields get thrown out. The immortals starting to take damage. The shield batteries just aren't ready. Can Cyril break through right now? Cyril's coming forward. You can see there's just not quite enough to defend the batteries. Do not finish in time. Two more immortals coming over here on the right. Oh, Sans he... is going to have to try to juggle his heart out with these war prisms. Trying to come in there to help out. Another immortal goes down. GG! It is done! Cyril is your GSL versus the world champion! A long road, a hard road, possibly the hardest road. This is your champion! By all accounts, this should have been where the story ended. While Cyril wasn't the first foreigner to win in Korea that year, his victory was different due to just how dominant it was and the level of competition that he faced. But despite the convincing tournament run and statistics placing him at the top, Cyril's status as the best player in the world was still debated. Yes, it was an impressive run in Korea, but skeptics argued that at the end of the day, it was only just one tournament, and Cyril would have to show that he could do it again. No matter where people landed on the argument as to whether Cyril was the best player in the world, no one could deny that Cyril was just as good as top Korean players, and that for once, there was a foreigner who could truly challenge the 20-year-long dominance of Korea. To really cement his status, Cyril would have to make history once again, and win it all at the WCS Global Finals at BlizzCon. Here, Cyril would make quick work of the Korean Protoss players SOS and Zest with back-to-back 2-0s to qualify for the quarterfinals where a rematch against Dark awaited him. However, things were different this time. Cyril was no longer the underdog. The foreigner killer was once again dominated, as Cyril quickly swept Dark 3-0 to qualify for the semifinals. In the semis, Cyril faced off against the Korean Zerg player and defending WCS champion, Rogue. Once again, Cyril was simply the better player, and looked unstoppable, from pressuring Rogue all around the map with Roach drops to showing his insane late game that rivals any Zerg player. Castle, he's showing such strong play. Rogue looking for angles. He keeps running into the wall that is Cyril, but the Hydra's swinging in from two sides. Cyril wrapping around that army. This Rogue. will be the last fight. Rogue is out. Cyril wins and gets himself a grand final appearance for the first time here at BlizzCon. Cyril was simply too much, as he took the series 3-1 and became the first ever foreigner to make the Grand Finals at a WCS Global Finals. Waiting for him in the Grand Finals would be yet another rematch in stats. After their marathon at GSL vs. The World, everything was set for an amazing and historic Grand Finals that could potentially take all seven games once again. However, this time, things would play out differently, as Cyril would strike first and overpower stats in Map 1. Cyril would continue to dominate the series, and would quickly take maps 2 and 3 to reach match point. Just like that, the world was one game away from witnessing history being made once more. While Stats was able to fight back and take two maps to make the series interesting once again, just like it has felt for the entire year so far, Cyril's victory was inevitable. These carriers have such damage output you can really see, but look at that! Every time an abduct goes off, he kills another carrier! Two more fall! The Broodlord's starting to get picked off here as well, though. He comes in once more, he could basically one-shot these carriers, and I don't think there's oh. any solution here for Stats! He's gonna commit! Cyril overwhelming the air fleet of Stats! And that is it! G -G. G -G. 20 years. From the beginning of StarCraft's history, Korea had dominated the game. But as another Blizzard title has told us before, Is it over? No king rules forever, my son. And as Cyril lifted the WCS trophy at BlizzCon, he would definitively cement himself as the best StarCraft II player in the world. 
Naturally, Cyril's victory spread and became international news. Although StarCraft was no longer at the same level of popularity as it once was, the fact was if you were a gamer and knew even just a bit about StarCraft, you knew just how historic Cyril's achievement was. Following Cyril's insane 2018, he continued to be a dominant player in 2019, even as other foreigners began to rise and challenge him. Namely Rainer, a young Italian Zerg player who would quickly become Cyril's main rival in Europe, as the two traded tournament wins throughout the year. While Cyril would fail to defend his WCS title at the end of 2019, his overall follow-up to a historic 2018 showed that the top foreigners could easily compete with Korea, especially with players like Rainer and Clem climbing the ranks. In fact, these days, whether you attribute it to the lack of support provided to the Korean scene or the game's overall lack of popularity in Korea compared to Brood War, it feels like a complete shift has taken over, as foreigners take up the top spots for all three races, and it's now the Korean players that must play catch-up, all started by one Finnish player and his year that made history. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to B, Pass, Retro, Shampoo, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Cloud and Steph for being our Diamond supporters. Wishing you all the best in 2024. If you want to talk to us, check out our Discord. If you want to support our channel and get info on unreleased videos, check out our Patreon. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah. Thanks for watching.